Last week, Callaway announced a merger with Top Golf. An exciting deal? Absolutely. But was it a good choice by Callaway? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. My name is Matt, and as I mentioned, today we are going to be taking a look at Callaway's stock and see how this new merger with Top Golf should affect the stock for the long run. Now, as always, not advice. Please don't take this as advice. Don't make any investment decisions based solely on what you hear here. But with that out of the way, if you like this video, I hope you consider hitting the thumbs up button. And uh, if you haven't already, like the 88% of you, I just hope that you don't mind hitting the subscribe button as well while you're over there. Now, if you're not familiar with Callaway specifically, Callaway is a golf company that was started in 1982 by Eli Callaway Jr. And if you're wondering where the ticker symbol Eli comes from, well, now you know. Callaway specializes in making golf clubs, balls, bags, and other golf accessories, and they also have a few other brands underneath their name. Those brands are Agio, Odyssey, Travis Matthew, and Jack Wolfskin. They also have Strata, which is an entry-level golf company, but that's a sub-brand, so that doesn't fall directly underneath the ownership of Callaway. Now, Top Golf is the latest and greatest innovation in golf. If you're not familiar, imagine going to your regular driving range, but mixing it with like a Dave & Buster's, and that's really what you get with Top Golf. They have food, they have the obvious driving range with all the games that you can play, and the way that they're setup works allows for people regardless of your golf skill level to still have fun and enjoy using their driving range at some locations i've seen they also even have pools and mini golf courses so it is really a family friendly environment but it can also be enjoyed by people of all different ages they currently have around 63 locations with the majority of those being in the us but they also have three in the uk as well as one in australia so before i break down the real opportunity here that i see for callaway i wanted to take a quick look at the numbers for Callaway with you, and this will be a really quick section here. So currently, Callaway's market cap is only 1.63 billion, which isn't as high as I expected. This definitely puts them in that small cap category for businesses, but that'll have a little bit more relevance later. A beta of 2.03, meaning that this is a very volatile stock. So not one that many investors will wanna get into if your objective is really kind of slow, steady, and without having huge swings in the price. I think right now, Topgolf is, I'm sorry. I think right now, Callaway's stock price fluctuates give or take 7% a week. Revenue growth is actually a good thing to see though here as we can see it's 5.06%. So they are still able to grow revenue, which I enjoy seeing. That said though, the net income margin of negative 9% is pretty rough to see. And it kind of gives you the question of why is that so bad? because they've been around since 1982. They are obviously an established company and they have huge brand recognition. So it was strange for me to see that their net income margin was negative. That said though, they do have the positive quick ratio of 1.15, so at least that's little reassuring to see. Now you might notice that I did not post either a PE ratio or an earnings per share on here. And that's because again, surprisingly, Callaway is not currently profitable. So. You know, take that into your own interpretation when you're looking into buying this stock because they are not currently profitable, but the deal they did with Topgolf is a $2 billion all stock deal. And that's where it's relevant because currently, again, Callaway's market cap is 1.63 billion, yet this is an all stock deal for $2 billion. So this deal is larger than Callaway's current market cap. So if you're a current shareholder, shareholder of Callaway, you might notice that your ownership is going to be diluted through this merger. Now, I just want to talk about the current problems that I see for Callaway. And probably the biggest one, as if you've been watching my channel for a while, this probably doesn't come as a surprise, but they don't really have a reoccurring source of revenue. Sure, people buy golf balls frequently because they end up in the woods or a pond very often, but when it comes to buying the actual hardware, so your golf clubs, your bag, even your shoes, those are all very high ticket items and Callaway does not have the cheapest brands when it comes to golf equipment. Usually too, and this is something that is very common in the golf world itself is people will spend a good amount of money buying a nice set of clubs, but they have the anticipation of holding on to those clubs for five years plus. I think I could use my dad as an example here. I know that he had a driver that he's had for, or at one point had for at least 10 years. So. It's not something that people buy at the start of the new season, like maybe you did when you were younger for baseball or soccer or something. So 
It's not something that people buy often. And with it being such a high ticket item, newer golfers as well as many other golfers tend to turn to used equipment which also is damaging to Callaway because that means that they don't receive any of those secondary sales of their own equipment. But I think that's where Topgolf creates this new opportunity for Callaway. So right now with this acquisition, Topgolf has around $500 million in debt. So it's a $2 billion deal plus the $500 million in debt. So you could look at this as a $2.5 billion deal. That said, Callaway does have over $600 million in cash reserves, so they won't really have any issues covering the debt that Topgolf has. But other than debt, what really does Topgolf bring to the table that seems so exciting for Callaway? Well, last year in 2019, Topgolf brought in about $1.1 billion in revenue, and that came from over 23 million customers that visited their locations. And while that $1.1 billion is very impressive for Topgolf, they've also been steadily increasing that amount of revenue by 10% every year for the past three years. And Topgolf locations aren't the only way that Topgolf makes money. They also have their patented Top Chaser technology, which you know, if you're in the bay, shoot your ball, you actually can see on a screen the ball Ball tracer so you could see if it hooked if you sliced it if you know where it ultimately ended up which is really cool especially for somebody like me that enjoys looking at that stuff if you're a new golfer you probably don't care but I like seeing those tracers and they are actually licensing out this technology to driving ranges in the US so far over 7,500 driving ranges in the US have used this technology and the revenue received from this licensed technology has increased by 233% over the past three years. So this is now becoming a significant source of revenue for Topgolf. Also circling back to those 23 million people that visited Topgolf last year, they say around 49% of them identify as a golfer. So that could be somebody like myself. I don't golf every weekend, but I try to golf at least like once a month when I can and honestly I think 49% is a little high I think that maybe I could have guessed that might have been more around like a 55 45 difference between non-golfers and golfers but using their numbers you can easily see that 51% of non-golfers as a huge opportunity for Callaway because now Callaway can utilize these top golf locations as almost a pro shop so we get those people that might be on the brink of wanting to actually take their game to the next level and leaving Top Golf to actually go hit the real course. They might stop at a Top Golf to buy their equipment, and then use, utilizing Top Golf as a pro shop, Callaway has the ability to add features like measuring clubs, fitting clubs, letting people try out the clubs that they have, sorting from different varieties or styles that they have available. And so this could be a great way for people that want to switch from again just being a top golf golfer to actually wanting to go to the real thing. And again, since top golf is what they're familiar with, it's a great place for a lot of people to start when it comes on that journey of buying clubs because there's a lot of stuff that goes into buying golf clubs, more than I think most people think. There's different kinds of shafts, there's different flexibilities with the shafts. You know, your driver can have different degrees to it and same with like your woods and whatnot. So there's a lot that goes into consideration and usually when it's your first few times buying golf clubs, the help of a pro goes a very long way. And that's obviously something I think Callaway is going to capitalize on. And lastly, and one of the things that stood up to me the most here when it comes to this opportunity for Callaway is I saw analysts projecting what but Callaway's future revenue sources will look like. And it goes as follows, which I thought was very interesting. They think that 30% will be golf equipment. So that is specifically golf clubs and golf balls. 24% of that, or 24% of the revenue will come from soft goods. So that would be apparel and golf bags. And 46% of the revenue will come from Top Golf. So the two categories that they have already combined is more than Top Golf, but now taking on Top Golf will become their largest single source of revenue, which could really help Callaway out in the long run. Because as I said, this company does not have the strongest balance sheet and it does not have the most impressive numbers that I've seen. You know, taking it at face value, if I were to just look at simply these numbers here and removing the Top Golf deal aside, I wouldn't touch Callaway. It's just not something that really fits into my investment philosophy. It's too volatile, high levels of debt, been around for a while and is still not really profitable. So there's a lot of things that are going against Callaway when it comes to just their stock performance. That said, I really believe that this new Topgolf merger can bring a huge opportunity to Callaway and allow for them to become a more profitable and successful company. To kind of summarize what I feel here as the real opportunities for Callaway, having a service that can become a 
more consistent source of revenue than relying on people whenever they need to buy a new driver, irons, putters, whatever. They can start receiving revenue from people who are non-golfers, which was previously a whole demographic that they were missing out on. They'll have the storefront now to sell their products, which could be very beneficial to help boost their sales numbers in their golf equipment. And oh, lastly, as I just said, they're taking on something that will easily become their largest source of revenue. So this merger to me, once I kind of dug deep into it, makes a lot of sense. They're not taking on a huge amount of debt. They can handle the debt they're taking on. It's going to be a great source of revenue for them, and it'll help just expand the brand of Callaway. So when it comes to if I'm gonna buy this or not, maybe. I might consider buying a few shares of this at first, and as I always like to do, just wait until the merger takes place or as we get closer to it to see what news comes out because things could change between now and the beginning of next year. So it's not one I'm gonna dive heavily into right now. As I always say though, if you wanna get a little exposure to it, there's nothing wrong with buying a few shares. That way you could take advantage, I think it's trading around $17 or so right now, and you could take advantage of that price while you have the opportunity and then just kind of see how it goes see what news comes out with this deal and if it continues to go up and up and up then you'll have the other uh oof. then you'll have other buying opportunities in the future so again not one that i'm sprinting to my computer to and placing trades selling out of things so i can buy this but it's one that's interesting and i definitely think it's one worth at least adding to your watch list so that's my two thoughts here about this merger it's exciting but i want to see how it kind of pans out before i put in large sums of money into this stock so i hope that you enjoyed this and i hope that you learned something about it if you have any questions for me about this analysis or if you have any other companies you'd like for me to take a look at please leave that in the comment section down below also for those of you that saw my short video yesterday let me know if you like that style of it it's something i'm trying because they're new to youtube and it could be a way for me to help grow my channel but let me know what your thoughts are about that because at the end of the day i care most about what you guys want to see not what maybe some future subscribers would see so whatever for those of you that are here with me now let me know your feedback on that as well with that said though super nice day outside today so i'm going to wrap up here uh, if you like this video hope that you hit the like button and again if you don't mind just subscribing because i know 88 percent of you watching these have not so i got my eye on you if you don't mind hitting the subscribe button that'd be super awesome of you all right I'm done here though, so thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're right here with me, and I really appreciate that. I'll let you go ahead, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.